Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about top 5 best cameras for portraits. Starting at number 5. OM System OM1. Not everyone needs a full frame camera. Like the Fujifilm X-T4, the OM System OM1 embraces the benefits of a smaller sensor to create a compelling alternative for photographers who prioritize size, versatility, and a fun handheld experience. Thanks to its stacked micro four-thirds sensor, the first of its kind, and a speedy TruePix X processor, the OM1 performed admirably in most our tests. Quite simply, it's the one of the most enjoyable cameras you can buy. We found that the OM1 performed well up to ISO 1600 and had slightly less aggressive noise reduction than its Olympus-made predecessors. Its computational modes are also the best you'll find outside a smartphone, with the likes of high residential shot, live North Dakota and in-camera focus stacking going some way to compensating for its smaller sensor. On the downside, its autofocus tracking isn't quite up to the level of Canon or Sony, and the controls can be a little fiddly. That 20MP resolution also isn't huge for a camera of this price. But if you can overlook those drawbacks, then the OM-1, and its huge range of micro four-thirds lenses, will make a fine companion. Coming at number 4. Canon EOS R7. If you don't need full frame, we think there's no crop sensor camera that can currently beat the Canon EOS R7. In our review, we highlighted its superb autofocus performance, excellent in-body image stabilization and the class-leading detail delivered by its 32.5MP sensor. Its full-frame cousins still have the edge in low light, but the EOS R7 produced lovely images across a range of scenarios in our real-world tests. We were also impressed by its 30 frames per second burst speeds, which make it a great choice for sports and wildlife enthusiasts. Our tests also found the EOS R7 a nice camera to hold and use, with a decent grip and generous spread of direct access controls. Dual UHS-2 card slots are a welcome bonus, while the ability to record uncropped 4K-60p video output makes the EOS R7 a tidy all-rounder. The only major drawback at present is the continued lack of native lenses, an issue not suffered by alternative APS-C cameras such as the Sony A6700 and Fujifilm X-T5. At number 3. Canon EOS R10. It isn't the cheapest option for beginners, but we think the Canon EOS R10 is the best camera for those starting their photographic journey. Spiritual successor to Canon's popular mid-range DSLRs, the EOS R10 has two standout skills impressive subject tracking autofocus and speedy 15 frames per second burst shooting, which was previously unheard of at this price. Both combine nicely to make the EOS R10 a versatile little camera for shooting all kinds of subjects, from portraits to speeding pets. During our autofocus testing, which we conducted on cats, deer, and a rapid cockapoodle, the R10 found and tracked subjects' eyes very well, with 15 frames per second burst speeds producing a decent hit rate. While it isn't a compact camera, the EOS R10 is lightweight at 429G and has a deep grip that makes it well-balanced in the hand with all kinds of lenses. Unfortunately, the EOS R10 doesn't yet have many native lenses, just two at the time of writing, and lacks in-body image stabilization. But if you're happy to buy some of the many full-frame RF lenses that work well with the camera, or adapt old ones using an EF EOS R adapter, then it's a versatile sidekick that's ideal for fledgling snappers. Number 2 of my list Sony A7RV The Sony A7RV takes up the mantle from the A7R4 as Sony's sharpest full-frame mirrorless camera. As we found in our review, it also solves several of the A7R IV's drawbacks to become a more complete professional camera. A new 61MP sensor and Bion's XR processor team up to deliver remarkably detailed stills. Eight stops of image stabilization made it easy to shoot handheld in testing, too. We were also impressed by the effectiveness of real rhyme recognition AF. It's not perfect, but it can generally detect a range of subjects and capture them crisply. From our time with the A7RV, we think its level of detail makes it best suited to landscape and studio work. Do keep in mind that it only produces its best results when paired with top-spec lenses, 
which will add heavily to the already high price tag. The A7R4 offers the same resolution, but we do think the A7RV is the better camera overall, particularly with a sharper EVF that makes framing a joy. That said, if you don't need so many sensor pixels, you'll find better value for less elsewhere. And number 1. Sony A7 IV. Following the fantastic A7 III was never going to be easy, but the A7 IV is a worthy successor. With a new 33MP sensor that's solid for both stills and video, it's a compelling mirrorless option for hybrid shooters. In our review, we called it a brilliant blend of photographic power and video versatility. A price hike does mean it's no longer an entry-level full-frame camera like its forebear, but a Bion's XR processor powers solid performance that broadly justifies the extra expenditure. The A7 IV also benefits from Sony's class-leading autofocus skills, plus upgrades like 10-bit video and an almost endless buffer depth with a CF Express card. Our tests found this buffer to be more generous than most photographers will need, with image quality leaning more towards resolution than low-light performance. There are compromises elsewhere, as well, there's a heavy crop on 4K footage and it isn't the simplest camera for beginners to use. The Canon EOS R6 also offers faster burst speeds for a similar price. But considering its powerful versatility and higher resolution, the Sony A7 IV deservedly takes our number one spot. Check out this video description for latest price and more information. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and stay tuned.